In this video, we'll look at adding virtualization hosts. Whilst the workspace can support Hyper-V, SCVMM, VMware, and Parallels, we'll just be mainly looking at a Hyper-V installation and carrying that forward through our videos to show how the workspace can be configured in your environment. Let's get to the lab. Here we're on our management server and we've opened up the management console for the workspace and connected through to our database and to our farm. And we've expanded out locations. By default, a location is created in location one, which if we choose the properties can be renamed. Whatever we'd like it to be. We can also set a default administrative account to be used for new computer groups. And we can view any administrative permissions assigned at that level. So, in our data center, we're going to, we've created that in an earlier video, our brokers. And in this video, we're going to connect to our virtualization hosts. If we wanted to connect to SCVMM, we would simply right click the node, add group or clusters. And the first thing we'd be told is that we don't have a SCVMM server configured. So we'd configure our SCVMM server. We'd enter the IP address of our server and the details of a local administrative account. If we test the connection to the server at this point, it will fail. And that's because I haven't installed Quest Broker Helper because I don't want to interfere with what's happening on the Hyper-V servers. But essentially you would go through, complete the wizard, and that would pull in your SCVMM Hyper-V host. And you could then, once you had your host configured, view each of your groups, folders, etc. in SCVMM. So we can add in our Hyper-V servers in a similar process. We right click, we choose add host, and we start to work through our wizard. So I can query our domain, and you'll find that I have one Hyper-V server that's been discovered. Select that Hyper-V server. Using the default, connect using the default service account that's been configured. The service account, if I look at the properties of Hyper-V virtualization hosts, you will see that I have a service account configured there that I've made a local administrator on all of my Hyper-V hosts. So going back into the add host wizard, select our Hyper-V host, use our default connect credentials and I can test my connection through to that host, make sure I can connect successfully. I can then specify a uh, custom load balancer to use for when I'm load balancing connections between running virtual machines. I can also say where should I be starting up new running machines. Notice you can't configure volumes or Hyper-V cache settings at this point. So we just go through. We can also set the amount of operations that can be conducted against that single Hyper-V host. So these are the default quantities. Uh, so we can perform 10 guest shutdown commands at once, 10 guest restart commands at once, etc. You can raise these figures, but that will put more strain on the Hyper-V servers. You may want to lower them. But those are all of the settings that we need to put in a Hyper-V server. If we wait a while, then we'll see that the services for high feet start, the server is bought online, and we then get a view of what, what is running. Nothing under the Diagnostics and Monitoring tab at the moment because we haven't configured for, like, for virtual desktops. But it's as simple as that. We've added in our first virtualization host. I'll now add in a second host. And here we are back, having installed the second server, Hype VO2. 
uh, you'll notice it took two attempts again to install the service running server core and I didn't have the firewall turned off couldn't install the components so I turned the firewall off to get the components to install now I turn the firewall back on and everything's fine you can see that load on the server is very low only 66 percent compared to my other server that is running one of my virtual machines 60 virtual machines so it's a higher load as you've seen configuring the settings for Hyper-V just right click uh, the Hyper-V node and you can use the default load balancing rules or you can specify your own one new rules are specified down at the load balancing section where we can create a my rule look at the different counters that we want so maximum value for CPU load is I don't want to run it over 95% I'll consider the server full if it hits 95% uh, CPU queue length if the queue length is greater than 10 I'll consider it maxed out number of users I happen to know that my servers will only accommodate 20 users so if it hits 20 users I'll consider that to be full and I can take that as being one of my custom rules for load balancing as well as load balancing we can of course on a per server basis on a per physical host basis uh, look at uh, properties for each physical host and um, whereas before when we were adding the host we could set our credentials our method of load balancing connections and adding new virtual machines onto the hardware we couldn't look at volumes but now we can we can look at volumes and say whether a volume is going to be a template volume whether I want to use it for placement of virtual machines so wouldn't naturally want to put virtual machines onto my C drive, I might not put it onto my D drive there, so I would push it into those servers. Um, and so that's for volume placement. And there's hypercache settings. Hypercache, how much RAM does the server reserve on the hypervisor for read only copy of the gold image that you're using? So, not the user's data, not changes that the user makes. Not necessarily read and write because it's a uh, it, it's a separate image, but caching, hence the term hypercache, the uh, gold image into RAM, so that of the template, so that any virtual machines running from it don't have to lift that data from disk. They can just read it straight from RAM and have a very much faster first time read. Well, that's about it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at adding our session hosts and provisioning those through. Hope to see you there.